What's up, everybody? Welcome to week 11 of dumpster diving. And if you're here, either A, you didn't watch last week's show, which you're lucky, it was horrendous. We're going to cover it in a minute. Or B, you have a short memory. And I, I love that for us because I'm hoping you forget how atrocious it was. We're going to recap it, though, because we always own our wins and our losses. And trust me, we had a ton of losses last week. We're going to get into the Week 12 sleepers that you need this week because on by we have the Patriots, Saints, Falcons, and Colts. We have more injuries to talk about. But before we start, please, please, I'm about to hit the intro video. Like and subscribe to what we're doing. We're trying to hit 2,500 followers. You can help us out by hitting that button. Here's the intro. I'll be right back. Welcome. You're listening to JWB Fantasy Football. Thanks for listening. All right. So since you're here, we're going to cover week 10 a little bit. I hate to do it because it's just disgusting. Fact is, apparently JWB is not going to fire me because if they didn't fire me after last week, I think I have a pretty solid job, at least through week 18. So before we do, just a quick reminder of what we do. We are looking for quarterbacks and tight ends that have to be outside the consensus top 15 in rankings with wide receivers and running backs that fall outside the top 20. We guarantee you that they're going to smash in the top 12. And then on top of that, we give you three fades of players that are ranked ahead of them in the consensus rank because you should play them over. So in order to be a win, have to finish their top 12. If we want to go overall win for a lineup win, they just have to outscore the person above them. Pretty simple. Underdog betting is what we do. That's why we call it dumpster diving. It is gross. It is ugly. But the fact is you already know to play McCaffrey. You already know to put Kelsey in your lineup. We're not going to waste your time with that. We're going to give you some really disgusting starts. So before we jump into week 11, let's recap week 10. We always do the good and the bad. So starting off with the good, there really was none. I mean, absolutely horrific last week. We went 1-11 and 11 in lineup starts. So I guess if you really want to stretch to say something good, you know, like you always want to give the kids like something to say they did good, even if they were horrific and like, you know, trip themselves playing soccer. Uh, for us, it was fading Ter Trevor Lawrence once again, actually put in a ter terrible performance. And he was outscored by Will Levis, who didn't bring his team into the end zone to show you how bad Lawrence was. But let's talk about the not good. All four picks did not even come close to smashing. The worst being this Jahan Dotson, who despite his quarterback throwing for over 300 yards, did not catch a single pass and only had one target. Otten was missed in the end zone as only red zone target. Levis barely got his team even into the red zone. And Arthur Smith finally gave all the carries to Bijan Robinson, which made everybody in the fantasy community rejoice except for this guy who told you to play Tyler Alger, who barely saw the field. So to recap, 0-4 on the top 12s, 1-11 in a lineup. Advice with Lawrence saving us the embarrassment of a complete over, but let's be honest, it is still embarrassing. So after back-to-back -back weeks of two top six finishes, we completely pissed our pants this week. And despite what Billy Madison says, pissing your pants is not cool. We'll do better this week for sure because the fact is it's almost mathematically impossible to do worse. So let's get right into it. Let's talk about these disgusting starts into week 11. And starting off, we're going to go with quarterback 21 coming off what has been a litany of injuries. Matthew Stafford is back and should pick up right where he left off and breathe some life back into Cooper Cup and Puka Nakua, who have been struggling with the backup quarterback quarterbacks under center. Seattle is 19th against opposing QBs and just got lit up by Sam Howell for 312 yards and three touchdowns. Stafford should come close to similar numbers this week, but the temper expectations, let's just say 275 and three with Cup going for over 125 yards this week. So who are we playing him over? Well, to start with, let's sit Baker Mayfield against that 49ers defense. We are going to play Stafford over his opponent, Geno Smith. Had a decent week last week, but let's face it, hasn't even been eclipsing 200 yards most weeks. And then we're going to fade Trevor Lawrence again, who just looks like a game manager against the Tennessee Titans defense. So once again, to recap, Stafford over Geno Smith. Trevor Lawrence, and Baker Mayfield. 
at running back 39. I love this kid averaging what would be an NFL record, 57 yards per touch. That's not a real stat, but it's probably close. But all right. Uh, they told me I have to be honest with y'all. So editor's note, it's actually 14.3 yards a carry and 13.9 yards a touch, not 57, but whatever the electric factory that is. Ravens rookie Keaton Mitchell comes in at running back 39 despite uh, playing a Bengals team that's 18th against opposing RBs. And I know why he's there. Mitchell had only four touches last week, but he still turned that into 13.6 PPR points. And now his coach has come out and stated that he clearly needs more touches and should see more this week in what should be a fairly high scoring game against division rivals. So Keaton Mitchell, I'm going to put him in my lineup over AJ Dillon, who gets the Chargers, James Cook against the Jets and Khalil Herbert coming back from injury against the Lions. So Keaton Mitchell over Dillon, Cook and Herbert this week should have a huge week. I'll tell you, I was so excited to put him in my lineup after mistakenly leaving him out last week, thinking he wouldn't get touches, though I was right about the touches. The points came, so I smashed him in my lineup this week, and he will be a mainstay in my lineup for as long as he is healthy. At wide receiver, wide receiver 24 brings us Hollywood Brown. The timing was off a little bit between Kyler Murray and his favorite target in his first game back, including missing Hollywood for a wide open touchdown that would have made his day look much better. But now he gets the Texans, which should help as they just gave up 295 yards and two touchdowns to Bengals wideouts last week. We know what C.J. Stroud is doing. We know what this Texans offense is doing. So I expect some back and forth with Arizona, and I expect Expect Kyler Murray to look better this week in his second game back from that knee injury. So looking at Hollywood Brown, let's play him over some familiar names. Let's talk about guys that were drafted in the same range he was in redraft. Uh, Hollywood Brown should be starting over Terry McLaurin, who gets the Giants, DeAndre Hopkins against the Jacksonville Jaguars, and DJ Moore against Detroit in Justin Fields' first game back. I don't expect them to pick up where they left off. I think there's going to be a little rust with Fields. And let's face it, when Justin Fields is off, everybody suffers. So that's Hollywood Brown over McLaren, Hopkins, and DJ Moore. And lastly, at tight end, the grossest of gross dumpster dives is always tight end. But this week is particularly disgusting. So we are going to rely on Tommy DeVito, who is back and starting for the Giants. And the only person that's probably happy for this to be the case is Daniel Bellinger, who led the Giants in receiving last week and has had over 30 yards for the second straight week. A tight end, a touchdown would solidify him as a tight end one. And Waller's replacement is due a touchdown at this point. And bring in the commanders, who are not only 18th in point allows to tight ends, but they are dead last in points allowed to opposing QBs. So the Italian Stallion should finally have a respectable game this week. I'm not putting Tommy DeVito in any of my lineups, but I'm at least going to trust him to hit his tight end for some points. I know it's gross, but that's what we do here. So who are we playing them over? Three other gross options. That's what tight end brings us. Chigga Conwell against the Jacksonville Jaguars. Will Levis is not putting the ball anywhere near the end zone. So Chigga Conwell is to say Gerald Everett against the Green Bay Packers and Tyler Conklin against the Buffalo Bills. If we were getting points for pass defended, I might put Conklin in my lineup, but for catches, I'm staying away from him. So that's Bellinger over a Conwell, Gerald Everett and Conklin this week. So listen, there is a lot of good happening over at JWB. Even if you're not getting it from this video where I absolutely sucked last week, be sure to check out my colleagues. So for clips for every player and the link to the JWB Discord, check out the video description. And then also follow us at JWB over underscore FF over at the X machine and check the pin tweet where you can find all our content instead of some of the guys, including some of the guys who are crushing it in rankings like Tyler, who you want to check out, who I believe is fifth in accuracy rankings over at Fantasy Pros. Check out Wyatt and the boys. There's a ton of good stuff over there. So give us a follow. Guarantee you that even if I'm sucking things up, they're going to get you a win. And please subscribe so you can check out all of the stuff that comes out from the JWB YouTube channel. I appreciate y'all. Let's get some wins this week.